So when I first started angel investing, I met some pretty experienced investors who told me that they really don't do due diligence. And their philosophy was that there really isn't all that much due diligence that can be done on early stage companies anyway. And so instead of paying for due diligence, they placed small bets in a bunch of different companies and then doubled down on the ones that were doing well. And I thought that that made a lot of sense, but after doing this myself for a while, I no longer subscribe to the, this philosophy. It's always easy to go in looking for the deal breaker. Uh, it's always easier to say no than to yes when we're doing due diligence, but I always try to keep an open mind due to one particular experience in that you can also find a nugget of gold that the entrepreneur doesn't even realize. So that was the first thing, is keep an open mind. Second is, and Rick Ford actually uh, alluded to this, is the management team, sort of the tone of the management team, not just that they have strong skills, but oftentimes after an angel investment, uh, the angels may not always have the right uh, to either have a decision on the next round of funding or have a strong say in the next round. So knowing the tone of the entrepreneur and knowing that they will protect you as the investor on the next round of funding if you don't have a voice in the game is really important. And then the third is really easy, it's barrier to entry. Maybe another one is the size of the market. That's usually, I mean, you wanna make sure there's enough out there for the company. Um, it's not just a small, kind of narrowed market. So yeah, I would say adding to the team and then the, the intellectual property, I think you alluded to in the market size. The only thing that I would add is competitive landscape, which is related to the market and the size of the market, but that often gives me clues about where else I want to dig in about that particular company. So we really, in the due diligence process, focus mostly on are they going to make money? And the reason for that is there is no shortage of opportunities to really make a big difference. There are, is a shortage of opportunity to make a big difference and realize a return so we can keep making a big difference. I'd love to see if we can change the, the term due diligence a little bit because diligence to me always means you know, a chore. You have to do it. It's like eat your vegetables, that kind of a thing. Whereas I really found in the experiences I have that the, the diligence part of it actually assists both the investor and the entrepreneur, because I think we heard from just the last presentation, David was saying, if you find something early enough, then you can really kind of mitigate it. My mom's a great one for the, the terms, you know, that I've heard when I was growing up. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. As an entrepreneur, I can say that I really wish I would have listened a little bit more closely to some of the hesitations that the investors had investing in my business, because um, they knew better than I did at 22 that uh, the things that, I, that they were uncovering were gonna be problems down the line. And then as an investor, I can say that I started with the philosophy that I mentioned before of placing small bets in a bunch of different companies. And even though I didn't lose a whole lot of money in some of those things that haven't gone so well, the time to just clean up the mess has been really daunting.